SpongeBob horror is... a phrase. Yeah, creepypastas will forever be a part of internet culture. And hey, I get it. It's fun to take an innocent piece of your childhood and .exe it up. And there's been some successful versions of this. Like Sonic. But when it comes to SpongeBob... I don't know. There's just something so inherently silly and goofy about it. Like, I'm genuinely curious to find someone whose childhood was actually ruined thanks to SpongeBob creepypastas. So today I wanted to dive into this world and see what this creepypasta has to offer. Games seem to be the best way to experience this. So buckle up as we dive headfirst into the insanity of SpongeBob Horror. The first game we're gonna check out is SpongeBob's Day of Terror. Yeah, I feel like that's what I'm gonna be in for this whole video. So we take control of Spongebob and Rock Bottom. You need to collect $9 to buy a bus ticket out of there. So, okay, it's vaguely based off the episode. You go outside and your objective is to collect these vague items. Every item equals a certain dollar amount. Yeah, there's the spatula, the chocolate bar at that vending machine, and the nasty patty that... I can't collect. Hey, I kinda need this to win. What, is the game busted? Now, you can't dilly-dally for too long or stay in one place. Yeah, that guy from Rock Bottom is chasing you. Wait, didn't he help SpongeBob? Yeah, that's the moral of the episode, right? SpongeBob's freaked out because this guy looks scary, but ends up helping him? Alright, well, hey, buddy, what's up? This is harder than I thought. I'm ready! Uh, okay. The game is super short. You have a small area to explore, and the items really stick out. Every round, though, the items are placed in different locations for replayability. No, thank you. It's a slender clone. Every item you collect has this guy chasing you more aggressively. So you get the items, buy your ticket, and head to the bus. Let's check out the ending. You are in rock bottom. My condolences. I mean, hey, whatever. It's a fine enough game that takes five minutes to beat. Show it to your cringe millennial friends and they'll eat it up. Up next, we got Krusty Zombies. Once again, you take control of Spongebob, who, I guess, has a gun, and... Wait a second, this looks familiar. Walking around shooting zombies with a gun, every shot gives you points, which you can then spend on opening doors for new areas, buying weapons and power-ups? Yeah, this is Call of Duty Zombies, that's not scary. Also, whose idea was it to combine Call of Duty and Spongebob? This game was made by and for a specific kind of fan. So the game isn't really horror as much as it is horror-adjacent. Yeah, some of the scenery is... scary, I guess. Whatever, this game is weird. I kinda like it though, if I'm being honest. Next game is The True Ingredients. Are y'all ready, kids? Oh god, I don't think so. Oh wait, is that Patrick? No, 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 I'm definitely not ready, Captain. So the game takes place in Underwear Zip City, and we're going to the Crunchy Cans restaurant. Yeah, I guess they really didn't want to get sued by Nickelodeon. So we start off inside the Krusty Krab, or whatever legally distinct term they used. It's kind of horrifying. Everyone has a realistic and nightmarish interpretation of what their cute cartoon counterparts are. For example, there's this fish customer who- ah! Uh... What the f- ah! Alright, forget this guy. So instead we talk to... Squidward. We order a human patty, but we have to get it ourselves. So we walk into the dark basement with our flashlight to find a patty. It's pretty simple, no jump scares or anything, but you are anticipating one, so there's some good tension and mood here, I guess. We bring the patty up to Squidward and take a seat. So we eat our human patty, but when it's time to pay, Squidward keeps raising the price to the point where we don't have enough money, which upsets one person in particular. Boom! Crab's jump scare. He knocks us out and we wake up next to Plankton. Or at least, a version of him. We're greeted with a lock where we need to figure out the correct combination of shapes. Eventually you come across a computer that- Hey! Free prizes! Alright! Is this a horror game or not? Yeah, so the entire music video of Never Gonna Give You Up plays, all the while occasionally flashing the symbols to input on the lock. So you do that, and while we're at it, I guess, we're helping Plankton steal the formula. I mean, why not? It's not like Mr. Krabs is our friend here. Yeah. Holy fish paste! This also sets off the alarm, where we need to get the hell out of here, because... Yep, don't want any part of that. So we're just running. Running anywhere that's not where SpongeBob is. 
He pops out of the walls and corners he's not supposed to be in. I don't know what this cursed creature is, but I'm not interested in learning. Eventually, we're cornered into a drop that looks like it's into a grinder. So, your options are either get eaten by SpongeBob or become mincemeat. And if you ask me, the choice is pretty clear. The end. Yep, I don't know what else I expected. Now this next game though actually has a weird amount of polish. Not a lot, but more than usual found in these simple creepypasta games. This is Sinister Squidward. For one thing, the game actually starts off with a cutscene, with some awful AI voices, oh my god. My name is Squidward, and I hate my life. I wake up every day, go to work, and come back home. So the story of this game is that Squidward is depressed and he's going to eliminate everyone at the Krusty Krab. Yeah, edgy. When the game puts us in control, we need to... do that. If you turn around, there's a freaking AK just chillin'. Like, was no one here alerted by this? So, you equip it and... No! <laughs> it's kinda hilarious. Again, is this a horror game? We now need to get rid of Mr. Krabs, but he's locked up in his office. By the way, what's with this perspective? Why is the order window so high up? How short is Squidward here, like three feet tall? Anyway, we find Mr. Krabs and Squidward says he's gonna blast him. And I'll take your money! <laughs> no! See you in hell. And with that, the game officially starts. We get newspaper articles about Squidward's dastardly deeds, along with this epic car chase scene. Followed by a news article on TV delivered by the Fishhead News Anchor. The perpetrator, Squidward Tentacles, has somehow managed to escape law enforcement. Oh come on, you AI everyone else's voice? Why is this one just a normal person doing voice acting? And not even attempting to do the breaking news voice! Anyway, it turns out Squidward kidnapped Spongebob and Patrick and barricaded himself within Spongebob's house. So, it's up to Sandy to save them. We need to explore the pineapple and save Spongebob and Patrick. However, Squidward is also roaming, and if you run into him... Yeah, he stabs you with his clarinet. Honestly, I'll give the game credit for not just being a cheap, loud, strobe light jump scare. I was actually more encouraged to want to keep playing since I knew I wouldn't need to deal with that. So you explore the house until coming across items. There's a door that's boarded up, so naturally you'll wander until you find a crowbar. You use the crowbar on the door and see that Patrick is in this saw trap. <laughs> you can only turn it off by destroying the breaker box. Sandy, thank you for saving me. You're welcome. Yeah, okay, thanks. Before we save SpongeBob, we need to escort Patrick out of the house which is way easier said than done. Patrick walks on his tippy toes at a Gary's pace. I get we're trying to sneak past Squidward, but good God, this gave me so much anxiety. Like, bro, please just move faster. After 45 minutes, Patrick eventually makes his way out. Now we gotta find SpongeBob. You'll wander all around the house, not making any progress until you realize you can move this bookshelf and reveal a secret passageway. We see SpongeBob also hooked up to some torture device where <laughs> They once again rip the audio straight from the show and kill any tension that was possibly built up. So what do we have to do? We need to find a wrench to open up the pipes to fill up a bucket of water. You take that bucket of water and dump it on the torture device. We save SpongeBob. And Squidward is so upset at this that he... ...does that. The end. What an amazing trip that was. I love how creepypasta games have kind of evolved. They are inherently silly in nature, so why not lean into that a bit more? I know I joked about killing the tension with the game using voice clips from the show, but it's hilarious. If the game wanted to be scary, then they could have just used cheap jump scares. So the game was many things, but one thing it was never was boring. And I think that's the most important factor. But now, I want to talk about the game that inspired me to dive into the world of Spongebob horror games, and why this video exists in the first place, with a little game called Around the Clock in Bikini Bottom. 
Now what makes this game stand out from the pack in my opinion isn't the fact that it's just another Spongebob horror game, but it's an actual Spongebob horror experience. It's a game that really goes all out and actually tries, because Around the Clock has cutscenes, a storyline, gameplay that actually tries to do more than set up a spooky jump scare. The in-game assets are original. Yeah, they're not the prettiest things out there, pretty rudimentary and crude, but I appreciate the effort that went into recreating the SpongeBob world from the ground up. There's a fair amount of polish throughout the entire game, whether it be text boxes, drawings, or attention to detail that true SpongeBob fans will notice. It really is a game that tries to give the player something positive and memorable to walk away with, not just another jump scare simulator. So let's go through some of this and see if I can convince you to play it as well. We start off with the French narrator, or at least a guy doing an impression. The residents are full of personality, but how? Not with chemical radiation, that's for sure. That would make all of these fine fish monsters. Which, hey, is super charming. I prefer this a million times over the lifeless garbage AI voice. As I mentioned earlier, the game tells you its story via text boxes. They're not fully voice acted, but you do get to hear ripped lines from the show to indicate the mood, I guess. Oh. Yeah. Good one, buddy. Level 1 is a tutorial, and it's all pretty basic stuff. Learning how to run, jump, and use the action button. All taking place in broad daylight. Nothing about this is scary at all. So far, it's just a fun first-person SpongeBob game. But quickly, things feel a bit ominous. The music is building up tension, and our objective is to look for Patrick, but he was just with us. As we wander around Jellyfish Fields, we... <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, haha, <laughs> didn't you hear me sneaking up? That's so hilarious. The first jump scare in the game is just Patrick playing a silly little prank on you. We'll eventually come across Squidward who wants to clear out the jellyfish. We then have a mini game race with Patrick, seeing who can collect 30 jellyfish first. We clear the path and Squidward can now leave and get ready for his clarinet performance later tonight at Glove World, leaving behind a golden spatula. Yeah, this game also has collectibles. After needing to navigate our way through the hooks, we'll run into Mr. Krabs. He says some of his treasure is on the other side of this forest, but he doesn't want to go because he saw a creature. That creature being this disturbing looking jellyfish with what seems to be a human face. You need to sneak around it to grab the treasure. However, it's pretty aggressive and more than likely it'll you know, getcha! Eventually, we retrieve the treasure and send Mr. Krabs on his way. Just then, though, a big purple teddy bear falls from the sky, steals our Goofy Goober ice cream coupons we received as payment, and then threatens us with a knife. Sure. We also see some more of those mutated jellyfish known as Jellians. Apparently, they're official characters, but they're from an episode I guess I haven't seen. The Overlord send down the Jellians to Bikini Bottom to capture and harvest its citizens. The next stage takes place at Glove World at 9 p.m. SpongeBob and Patrick are wanting to watch Squidward's performance. Squidward, meanwhile, is patiently awaiting his big moment. Just then, though, Mr. Krabs calls him, saying there's an emergency. Squidward doesn't care until he's greeted by a mysterious visitor himself. Mr. Krabs tells Squidward to gather up Spongebob and Patrick and meet at the Krusty Krab. A Jellian attack then takes place, with someone dressed in a Glove World suit attacking and kidnapping Spongebob. So we take control of Patrick and need to pursue him, running through Glove World that's in complete chaos. Scaffoldings are falling apart, people are running away, cars are literally crashing into walls, it's pure chaos, I love it. We can't let Glovey get too far ahead of us or else we lose. Eventually, we catch up to the Tunnel of Glove and need to explore this dark shutdown ride. The game now starts to look like a traditional horror game. Walking around dark corridors, tons of corners where you don't know what's gonna jump out at you, the works. We eventually do get jumped and wake up in a room, where a Glove World employee has kind of gone insane, working with the Jellians with the promise of a promotion at work. It reminds me of the psychopaths from Dead Rising. Like, why is this guy helping the aliens? Anyway, we then need to explore this puzzle to find SpongeBob. It's just walking around a bunch of different rooms, avoiding setting off traps and running into the jump scare monster. Again, this is the typical first-person horror experience I was expecting, but it means so much more given all the context and setup. 
This alone could have just been a horror game, right? Like if you called it GloveWorld.exe and the game started up right inside the tunnel, it would probably just get lost in a sea of Spongebob horror. So that's the main thing I really like about this so far context and world building. You're given a map, but it's so hard to read and understand that I just started to blindly run around until I found Spongebob. There are some dangers you gotta look out for though. There's Glovey who follows you around the whole time, a room full of panels where if you step on it, hordes of jellions will hunt you down, and a sleeping whale whose room you can't run in or else it wakes up. Eventually we find Spongebob and, well, I'll let the cutscene play out. <gasps> Amazing. And we hightail it to the Krusty Krab with Squidward. With everyone now together, the plan is to head back to our homes to gather any resources and necessities. First up is Mr. Krabs. Immediately upon entering his house, we get startled by a lone jellion who runs away. Our objective is to collect what's most important to Mr. Krabs. Money! Pearl is sleeping, so she'll be fine. We need to wander around the house and find 18 piles of money. However, you might notice a Pearl alarm. Pearl, I guess, is sleepwalking and gets violent, so whenever her alarm is red, she'll start chasing you down. And you need to be on the lookout. Once again, the gameplay is simple, slender in the eight pages. After collecting all the money, we need to find our... Iconic Mr. Krabs Blaster. The power to the house, though, then gets cut, and Pearl comes charging at you. You blast at her in self-defense, and she starts melting. It turns out she was infected by the Jellions. Yeah, we're too late. Pearl is dead. Mr. Krabs then looks at his money and a picture of his daughter, realizing what the true treasure was all along. Well, I don't feel bad for him. He did make the choice. It's pretty obvious he should have said screw the money. So no, I don't feel bad. Next level is Squidward's house. We need to retrieve his important art pieces and clarinet. Again, another idiotic choice. This time though, we're getting hunted by that big human face jellyfish. When we grab an item, we don't put it in the inventory, so we need to carry it all the way outside into the boat, all while not getting detected. Next level is Spongebob's house. You need to collect Gary. Alright, at least this one makes sense. He's hiding somewhere and you need to pour food in the bowl to get his attention. However, one of the Jellions gets a hold of the magic pencil and revives Doodle Bob, as well as creating Doodle Patrick, who are now hunting you in your home. Doodle Bob wanders from room to room and you gotta hide when you hear him coming. Doodle Patrick, however, sticks to the ceiling like that one meme and will drop on you if you're not careful. I really love how clean Doodle Bob looks here. Seriously, props to you guys. So we save Gary and hightail it out of there. Patrick's level is probably the most interesting so far. His rock is incredibly small, so he managed to grab all the items pretty quickly. However, he notices the imagination box, where he thinks some of his toys are. We get jump scared in and taken to a fever dream nightmare world, which artistically and thematically is pretty cool, right? Like the imagination box can be literally anything. So if the last thing Patrick saw was a monster giving him a heart attack, then it would only make sense that the world he's imagining is now full of horror and dread. <laughs> this level is one of the more difficult ones. You have to run around this maze all while being hunted by some shadowy figure. You'll hear footsteps running towards you and need to shine your light at them to keep them at bay. There's also some platforming segments that I always struggle with in these kind of games. When we escape the box, we're confronted by one of the Jellions in charge. Where then, Patrick sees a comic book of Mermaid Man and gets inspired. <laughs> yes, you are seeing this correctly. Patrick is punching the daylight out of this alien creature a la Punch-Out. This is once again amazing. All of the horror is dropped in favor of just having a fun time. You gotta punch, step in and out whenever the alien attacks. It's actually pretty deep in terms of first person fighting mechanics. So that's basically where I left off in my free time. I gave you an abridged run through, but in my personal playthrough, every stage took me like almost an hour with just how bad I am at horror games. I freeze up constantly and just start aimlessly running into the unknown, not thinking about what lies ahead. I just really wanted to show off this game and give it the spotlight it deserves, because this is a pretty huge game. Even if you're proficient at horror games, this will still take you multiple hours to beat. 
The variety is really what gives this game its charm. You're essentially playing multiple horror games throughout your time. Sometimes it's the collect the items horror game, other times it's the run away from the monster horror game, and other times you're using the iconic Mr. Krabs blaster in a boss battle. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place, but that's part of the charm. I also personally appreciate that the jump scares aren't so ungodly loud and strobe lighty. They're enough to startle you, sure, but if you have headphones, it's not gonna blow out your eardrums. They're usually fairly lighthearted and silly. I'll show you a few, but if you're still susceptible to heart attacks or something, I'll turn down the volume and throw in some Mario music or something. I was genuinely losing my mind playing these games. So much so I actually wanted to record myself playing through one so you could share my first impressions right alongside. So that's what I did for the next game. Alright, welcome to uh, Nightmare in Squidville. Please excuse the rudimentary setup, I didn't feel like getting too fancied up for, you know, Nightmare in Squidville. Let's see what's up here. I'm already so tired of these games. <laughs> Hey, SpongeBob, wake up. We must find Squidward. It's already dark. Oh, I must have fallen asleep. Let us knock on some doors to find out where he is. Alright, gotta love the AI voices right off the bat again. I would prefer people doing garbage impressions. Hello, have you seen Squidward? Alright. So, um, apparently, from what I can guess, is that this game follows the plot of Squidville, the classic episode, where Squ uh, Squidward moves away. He's had enough of Spongebob and Patrick's garbage. He moves to Squidville, he gets the canned bread, he gets to do everything he's always wanted to. But the moral of the story is that his life gets a little too boring. And, uh, we have where to rescue him. Where is everybody? Him. Where is everybody, yeah. Uh, oh, maybe over there. So, you know, maybe this is a uh, Snyder Cut of sorts, a special edition where maybe Spongebob and Patrick were too late <laughs> to show up to Squidville because Squidward's causing a wreck. Um, I, I don't know. I really don't know. But we'll head to the fire. Is this you where we need to- remember that crazy flying guy with a leaf blower? Oh, yes. that was Squidward. Well, I guess he crashed. <laughs> Alright, alternate ending. Uh, Squidward flies away at the end of the episode, if you recall. He's dead now. You know, I don't, I'll be honest. I am a little scared. But... It doesn't feel as bad. Oh, I can run, thank god. Oh, Jesus. Hello? Alright. Enjoy your night. It doesn't feel as scary hanging out with Patrick. If I was by myself, I'd probably be more worried, but... With a, with a buddy by your side, it's not too bad. Let's see, what's this? Full of health. Oh, this is where we can get the canned bread. Hello? Alright, where the hell am I going? Here's some street lights. Oh. Okay. SpongeBob? SpongeBob. I'm so scared. Oh my god, his voice scared the hell out of me. Alright, well. Ooh, there's a nice video game object blue light over here we should probably go to. I didn't know the flying Dutchman has a bicycle. Alright, never mind. Ooh, this buddy over here. What the? Oh, it's jelly jellyfish. I was like, oh hell no. I don't want to go to Buddy over there. He don't look too friendly. Is this Squidward over there? Oh, you're gonna make me go over there, bro. Hello? Alright, I'm gonna take that as a no. Let's go, Patrick. Let's get the hell- I am not talking to that man. Every v fiber of video game instinct in me is saying, do not trust that man. Oh, what is that? As I blindly run towards it. What the f- what is that? Oh, is it a boat? Oh! 
Oh, 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 we're in business. We're driving the boat mobile. Okay, where's the, uh, where's that, uh, zombie guy at? I, I feel safer now that I could probably just plow him over. Let's just give this a shot here. We cannot go without Squidward. Oh. Oops. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob, wake up. We must oh, I gotta restart, man. It's already dark. Wait a minute. I've seen this before. This is a dream and you will not escape. <laughs> no! Oh my god, no! Wake up. wake up, please! No! Can I play? No! Hello! Is that it? Is that, that, that's game over. Hey, yo, hold up. Is this something up right here? Oh my god, I don't like the looks of that, but whatever. Let's give it a shot. It looks like we made some kind of progress. Okay, Patrick, go to that other switch. Okay. Let's go. Maybe we must press the button at the same time. All right. Let me count and press when he say so. Okay. Four. Four. Seven. Seven. Twelve. Twelve. Whoa. Oh my god, bro. Man. No. No. I was oh my ready. god, I was not. Let me count and press when he say so. Four. Four. Seven. seven twelve. Whoa. Whoa. What comes next? No. All right, we did it. I'm surprised that worked. Oh goodness, that does not look very mucho. Is that the hey, is that Squidward? Squidward, Squidward Ooh, we have I, been looking for you all day. Guy. Hey Squidward, why are you in a cage? SpongeBob, Patrick, I am happy to see you. Really, mm. would you be so kind and help me out? The tentacle acres is a trap. They got me here. They are cannibals. They have even the other ones. I am next. Okay. I tried to fly away with the lead blower, but I crashed. So they knocked me out and threw me in a cage. And the game must be somewhere near you. Maybe you see them gather at the park? Please hang in there. We see what we can do. Either we find the K or there is another way. Yes. Okay, so canonically, yes, the episode goes on as usual, but. Squidward uh, crashes his reef, uh, reef blower, which to be fair, the episode does end with him flying away. We don't actually see him make it back to his house. So this could technically, oh, be next. Them. Oh, drive over them. All right, Patrick, if you say so. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. So I gotta look for a key. What is this, Pat what is this Patrick? So somewhere here. Does not they said to, good. oh. Thank God. I, I got the key. Thank God I found that right then and there, because there was no way. I was gonna just run around. Oh, now I got turned around though. I don't remember where I was at. Oh, here we are. Thank goodness. Okay, let's slow down here. Let's slow down here with this epic driving. All right, whatever. We got the key, Squiddy. Let's get you out of here. Nope. Oh, uh oh. Get in the car. Is everyone in? Squidward, Patrick, alright, everyone's here. Now we can drive, um, out of here, the way I did initially without realizing it and getting the game over. Alright, let's go. Where is the exit? Oh no, it's evil Squidward house. Oh god, excuse me. I'm trying to leave, trying to find the exit. There are too many. I love the evil houses, they're so funny. Alright, thank you. <laughs> Pardon me? I'm just trying to uh leave tentacle acres. Oh, oh there we go, that's it. There's the end. Bada boom! Game over. What is this place? Oh, hell is rising. Oh, hell is rising. Oh, no. Do you see this in front of us? 
Dark Squid? His name is Dark Squid. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, oh, uh oh. We got real gameplay here. Excuse me. I'm too fast Come for you. On. We get through this nightmare. This is genuinely insane. This is so insane. I'll be honest, I was kind of expecting a uh, another walkie simulator with jump scares. But I haven't had a single jump scare. Uh, unless you consider this a jump scare. Dark Squid. Which I, I really don't. <laughs> but this is like a real game. Alright, this music here. This music does not imply scary. I, I, no, I don't... Oh! I don't want to get hit. I don't want to have to do this again. These games would definitely be the kind that would make you redo this all from the beginning. Oh, oh, oh! Let's go! Alright, we're fine. Oh! Oh, I'm getting hurt. I see the I see the Kool-Aid on the screen. Alright. You need to boost. Space to boost, space to boost. I'm I'm boosting. We are trapped inside a dream. Where Squidbill of the demons to break the spell. Okay. This is a dream. I have the burning leaf blower. Let's claim this place. The burning reef blower, I'll be honest, is the coolest thing I've ever heard. It all comes full circle. Yeah, you know what we're doing? Playing with our reef blower. Yeah, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's collect some fuel. All right, bring it on. I'm, I'm, let's go. I'm playing with the reef blower. This is how you do it. I don't even know how much ammo. Oh, I can see the fuel up there. Okay, on the top. My, my camera's probably blocking it, but there's a little, little ammo canister showing how much I have left, and I'm I out of need fuel. To find more fuel. Oh, it's fuel. It's, it's a instant. It's a full heal. Hey, hey, hey! Do not touch me. I am playing with the reef blower. I don't know what this music is. I don't even know if this is copyrighted, but I'll put in some... I'll put in some Doom music, because I think that's what this calls for. As we burn these Squidward heads. Oh, yeah. Alright, I'm out. This is, this is, this is not scary. <laughs> I'll take it, though. I mean, this... This over a walk... It's this or a walking simulator, and I am so choosing the Doom flamethrower part. Reef blower part. Get out of my face. Oh. You don't want none of this. You really don't want none. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, hold on. Thank god it's Call of Duty rules and I can just run away and heal. It's very generous, I'll be honest. The game could have- oh, what the f- This game could have easily, like, one-shot killed me and make me do it from the beginning. Oh, oh god, oh god, give me a break, give me a break. Where are they coming from? I just, they're, they just, they're swarming me. I think this is all I'm supposed to be doing. Is just killing the multiple squid heads now. Squid demon heads. Alright. Oh, oh god, there's more. I collected a lot of the fuel, I didn't think it instantly rehealed it fully with every one. So I hope I didn't like screw myself. Alright, hold on, hold on guys. Come on, give me a break here. This is genuine. This is so. This is ridiculous. I, I really don't know if this is all I'm supposed to be doing. I don't seem to be making much progress. Oh my god, hold on guys, I need to get some fuel.
Oh no, did I use up all the fuel? Did I not manage my resources properly in this game where I did not expect to have to manage resources? Sleep well, sleep well. Oh, there well. we go. We Swim got him. Take that, Squidville. You evil demon hellscape. And wherever Dark Squid is, I hope he's listening. I got a full can of flamethrower right Thank here. Thank you, SpongeBob. You saved us. All right. We did it. In memory of Steven Hillenberg. Okay, well, you know what? Thank you for saying that, at least. What is this? What is this credit music? Ooh. That's funky. Patrick Estrella? You may be, uh... You may be onto something here. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Oh. Ooh. So that was Nightmare in Squidville, you know, I've, like I said before, I was playing all these games, recording myself, just, you know, before I knew how to really set up the video, so I wanted to have you guys play one game with me at least, and get the experience. Spongebob horror can be a little all over the place as we can see. So here's a creepypasta I found that we can explore together. It's not really a game, but hey, when in Rome. Squidward's Sewer Slide. Now anyone who's ever been on the internet was bound to come across this picture and this title card. You know, it's one of those things that really takes away your innocence. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You just go on the internet to look at cute YouTube videos, but you eventually find the creepy pasta rabbit hole and find this. <laughs> and any kind of hope and joy you had for the future is gone. So what is the story of this episode? On November 7th, 2004, there were some storyboards that were finished in Scotland and were put on a tape, which was then sent to the lead animators and sound editors at Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, California. The tape was supposed to feature the rough cut for the season four premiere episode, Fear of a Krabby Patty, but instead began with a title card using the name Squidward's S Sewer Slide. While a little thrown off at first, the animators continued watching it because, hey, they just thought it was some kind of sick joke. However, after watching the episode, four animators were sent to a hospital. Barry O'Neill, Grant Kirkland Jr., Alyssa Simpson, and Jack Galistan. One of them actually committing the sewer slide itself. Once the tape was recovered, the man who made the episode was traced back and found to, and was then arrested. That's the story of the episode, and of course, this cursedness was leaked onto the internet. Alright, let's watch this episode, because of course, why wouldn't it be on YouTube? This is my favorite episode! <laughs> yeah, to be honest, this stuff did kind of scare me as a kid. Because it's meant to. It's meant to scare the children. But now, I'm a big man adult. And it's gonna take a lot more than some spooky filters to make me scared. Let's fast forward a little bit. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at those eyes. It looks like the, the sad Brendan Fraser face, you know? God rest his soul. He's still alive. But at what cost? Everyone's got. <laughs> it's a little. It's kind. Oh, it's kind of funny, watching it as an adult. You know what I'm saying? He cries. Oh, <laughs> what happened here? All right, we got this, and then are they just gonna throw on a ping of? Oh, there it is. There's the blood. <laughs> Squidward cries blood. Oh, and there's the face. To be honest, I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan of that at all. Okay, so I was trying to look for other footage of it, and I, I came across this SpongeBob's sewer slide. Oh my god. Why not? Why not? You know, why not? Gone! Gone! He's gone! Okay. 
I don't want to get. I'm also. I'm also trying not to get claimed uh, by Viacom. There's the eyes. Is that all this video is? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's scary. Is he gonna jump scare me? Is that a, is that a gun? Oh my god! <laughs> Am I supposed to take this seriously? What's this? Patrick dies? I, I want to watch that. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, that's the Spongebob Lost episode. At least, it was a lost episode. Until... When did the episode come out? Until the episode, Spongebob in Random Land. Now, I didn't see it because, I'll be honest, I kind of stopped watching Spongebob. It's kind of going on for too long now. But from what I can gather, the episode is an extra-dimensional location where the laws of logic no longer apply. Uh, Spongebob and Squidward end up there somehow, which leads us to this scene. Funny? Oh, this place is a <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely insane. The fact that they actually did the Squidward's Red Mist, we'll call it that, into a real thing, and that is kind of really creepy. <laughs> like, listen, maybe that's just because I was a big baby when I was a kid, but remember the episode with the hash-slinging slasher, and the lights were flickering on and off, and it turned out to be Nosferatu? <laughs> I didn't know who Nosferatu was as a kid, so when I saw this vampire freak, I had nightmares about it. I'd lay in bed thinking, oh man, I'm gonna have a nice sleep, and I'd look at my light switch and think, oh man, what if Nosferatu was there? Side note, you know what else was unnecessarily frightening? <laughs> that, why was that so scary? You didn't have to do that to me, I was nine. Poor Wormy. And of course, there were video games. They weren't good ones, but there were games. It was your typical slender walking around a spooky house with a flashlight and collecting stuff and trying not to get eaten. Oh, it's just as scary as I remember. But not as scary as Wormy. But if you want an example of SpongeBob horror in its purest form, then look no further. Okay, so I came across this, uh, Cursed Spongebob comic, and it's so terrifying that I decided to poorly dub it over and make you experience it with me. I'm sorry. There's Patrick. The last few days, Patrick has been acting very strange. I hope bringing him here will help. Hey, Patrick! Ready to catch jellyfish? Catching. Have you ever thought what jellyfish feel when you capture them? Fear or anger? Huh? But when we finish playing, we set them free! Freedom! Tell me, Bob! Do you know how starfish feel? Let me... Show you! Our stomachs extend out of our bodies! With them, we inject enzymes into our prey! Patrick, stay away! I'm sorry, Spongebob. I said stay away! <laughs> Almost home. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Why do you do this, Patrick? You and I are best friends. Best friends? You and Mr. Krabs just used me! What? What are you talking about? I would never use you! Stop lying! Oh, Jesus, I can't show that. That's... That's messed up. Okay. <laughs> he kills Spongebob. Oh, no! Uh, okay, cool. Now I have to voice Sandy. Huh? Patrick, are you okay? Where's Spongebob? 
SpongeBob paid for his crimes. And now it's your turn, Sandy! Well, Patrick, I will ask you one more time. Where is SpongeBob? All right, that's the end of part one. How wonderful. If you're interested in the story because you're a sick psychopath, basically Sandy fights Patrick and Squidward shows up to help. Patrick then escapes, leading us to the Krusty Krab. It's very strange. Where is everybody? Not a single customer has come. Not even Bob and Squidward showed up for work. I think I'd better close for the day. Hi? Patrick, me favorite client. Do you know where Bob or Squidward? Do you know where Bob or Squidward? No, I haven't seen them today. But I didn't come to talk about Bob. <laughs> I came to show you something. My own Krabby Patty. Your own Krabby Patty? See? I call it the Pearl Burger! What have you done to me, little girl? You're a monster! What did I do? Well, I did to him what you've done to me for years! Pearl is also a girl. I remember everything, Mr. Krabs. When you discovered the regenerative properties of starfish, you decided to steal a part of mine. You created an artificial Patrick to use for your benefit. <laughs> money, 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 money. And for years you used it to create your precious crab pay. I wonder what the secret ingredient of Krabby Patty. Not structurally a great sentence, but also, what the hell? And then they fight. Well, hey, I think we got a bit off topic here. I mainly wanted to explore every aspect of the SpongeBob horror world on the internet. The games, though, were really the stars of the show. So, hey, thanks for watching, and maybe we'll have another spooky adventure in the future. Bye bye for now.